I'm a medical doctor, and I'm brown, uh, but I'm not in the cure plan. I have not like the medical plan. I'm in the preventive line. So in preventive line, we also actually play a big role in mental health. So like in my department, uh, some of the lecturers are actually interested in preventive diabetes matters, in hypertension, in AIDS, in, in dengue. But I still want to see that my dear half is uh, Dr. Hatte, the psychiatrist. So it's like it's a component for me to do my preventive component mental health as well. So that actually would be, I think, a better view, a better picture for preventive medicine and mental health in the So let's talk about physiotherapy treatment. If you look at the treatment of physiotherapy in very early days, your treatment is actually not, not what we have now. They are actually being put in a stitch, they are being chained, what else? Until we actually found typical antipsychotic. It's a good medicine. It's actually controls the spotty symptoms. Unfortunately, when people look at you, it's a sick infection. But why? They have all the involuntary movement facial expression, humbling, and lowering. That's where actually we take a lot of distress to all these patients. Although they start to have insight to themselves, but because of the side effect, they isolated themselves, not to be actually involved in this. And later on, after the typical anesthetic, along that line, we have ECT. You know what is ECT? They actually take a electrical conversion therapy. It's also one of the modality. Those who have uh, a bit violence, a bit uh, educated in politics, and they're not even going to be in that But unfortunately, those who are only at the level of institution of the hospital. So you, can, you need to bring the patient every time when they're to the hospital, and you have to come to that So it's not ideal, actually, a game of competition. Later on, in the evolution of the treatment, we found the key difference on the side of it, which is good for the patient to control the positive symptom. It's actually patients, those who have negative symptoms, which improve. Okay? Negative symptom of isolation, uncanny, so they actually more or less look like us. They actually they function well. Unfortunately, this is the problem happened. Metabolic syndrome is schizophrenia. So this is the latest thing we are looking at. We improve them mentally, but unfortunately, we have another problem with them. So this is the leading cause of death in mental illness. They are no longer like we are no longer. I mean, this is not only really exclusive to us, but Cardiovascular disease is also happened in schizophrenia. And in fact, this is actually the cause of premature death. If you look at this study, this study is being done to normal operation, not to schizophrenia. So I mean, we actually found the risk factor for cardiovascular, which is a way back 20 years ago. And we actually have intervention to the normal operation. But what we found in publication, in the publication in fact, this is 11, 13 years ago. We found that schizophrenia of in fact is having a similar risk factor in the normal population. And we need to find out why. And not only that, when they compare with gender population, they found that for cardiovascular mortality, myocardial infarct, heart problem, diabetes, myocardial infarct is way, way higher compared to general population. And when we actually compare the patients of the bipolar, we will notice that all the risk factors, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, is all actually higher than the bipolar. We need to find out why this thing happen. Okay. This slide trying to explain if you 
had one risk factor at least, you might actually have two times higher risk to develop coronary heart disease. But if you have five risk factors, it doesn't mean that you have five times higher risk. The risk for you to develop the disease is actually is exponential. In normal heart science, you might be actually getting signs of four times higher for you to develop the disease. So just imagine that we all know for spiritual patients, they do not only have one risk factor, they have multiple risk factors. So, if Prof. Hockey said, in prevention of schizophrenia for, for relapse, it's actually vapor injection. But when they have a multiple problem, you cannot wish that all the hypertensive treatment that is used all in vapor. Even you want to up and take vaccine orally instead of combining, it's difficult. But when you have a multiple community, it's even difficult to handle. So you are giving this classification as well as also for the cancer. Okay, this is what we plan to achieve in preventive medicine. If you actually reduce, I mean, if you do it objectively, sorry, if you do it objectively, if in blood cholesterol you manage to reduce by 10 percent, you will be able to reduce the heart disease by 30 percent. That's how in public health we translate into the matter very effectively. And when you actually do it in smoking situations, you can actually reduce further by 50 to 70 percent. So you can see that in in, in public health, when we actually treat condition, we actually prevent the complication. So metabolic syndrome or disturbances basically not weight gain, especially for weight sufferance, that is minus, is in linear and metabolic syndrome. So we go one by one, weight gain. Can Sister Jamila, can you give me uh, an answer? What is the proportion you think you have been observed among your statistician? How many percent of them is your overweight or obese? It doesn't matter the number of all our patients. Just keep rough forty percent. Do you think we are too well motivated to reduce our weight? So you are giving the very right, right answer. Actually, a study being done, they will notice that they may not be overweight, but they actually belong to obese population. Obese means your BMI is actually more than 30 kg per meter square. There's no formula, there's a formula to, to measure that. But to make life easier, you see the number, if it is more than 30 means you are obese. Okay? Um, luckily, in this, we don't have obese, but we have overweight. <laughs> so you can measure your weight now, your, 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 your height, you know that you belong to overweight. Okay. This is what I say. Prevention of schizophrenia in terms of referral, in terms of institution, I, I say it is very ideal. You think that you just eat people in the same class and you function well, fine. But the yeah, admission later on is not because of relapse, it's the complication of hormonality. So you can see that you're preventing one. But in the future, I plan to be admitted to other medical ones, so to other surgical ones, because of diabetes, education, and so on. So, this is how the healthcare cost will be cycling to be safe in this, but will be cycling to the competition. Okay. What is the culprit? Okay. We know that they are actually not a lot of only McDonald's, the heart. But the main problem is cost medication. If you look at this, those who are actually on voluntary particular experiment have actually higher risk to have weight gain. Okay. It's very easy to look at this. If you are actually above this line, you are at risk. If you are below this line, you are actually at protective 
for being for having weight gain. So this is for this study it really shows that all of these three drugs actually is to build on the previous for weight gain. And in these studies we may actually compare for each medication with placebo. Then what we notice is again all these three drugs, respiradone, quantity and quantity. This actually is the main contributors contributors for weight gain. What do you find with it? For my baseline, my weight now is 50 kg. Okay. Uh, if I actually have more than 7%, 10% will be 5 kg, 10% should be in between 3.5 and so So if I actually, for the weight of 50 kg, if I actually have weight gain more than 3.5 kg, I uh, will actually put on the this factory. I have to wait here. So we will be noticing that 3 point five is quite a lot. Okay? For more than 7 percent. For 50 kg. More so if you think your weight line is 60 kg. So 3 point five. I mean 7 percent will be 40 kg. So this is such a difficulty. The next thing about weight gain. Do you think that actually patients non-compliance is associated with weight gain? We always see schizophrenia patients is actually as no point to school inside and get education in the education. But when I actually look, up, look at this study in terms of compliance about obesity, those who actually who actually have overweight and obese especially the one that has a non-compliance so this is an indication that they know they have been put away, they know that somehow they must be this medication for me, and that's why it comes from compliance. So it's like an issue between the side effects and non compliance. Now we go into this epidemia. This epidemia means you take the fucking blood, you check for your lipid profile. So in normal population, if your cholesterol levels become higher and higher, your risk factor for cardiovascular disease is also increased. And what we found that those patients on clozapine or nisoprene particular respirator is actually have higher risk for patients in check who have high blood cholesterol. So actually for those patients who are actually on medication, if you have an opportunity to screen with your blood, do screen for your fasting for the sort of stuff, okay? Just to check on the effects of the medication. For metabolic syndrome, it's actually a very easy slide. So what it means is actually it's a cluster of factors including insulin resistance, hypertension, central obesity, dyslipidemia, and So I have actually a question for you. Who says that um, Metabolic syndrome is actually related to this conference. Raise your hand. Okay. No punishment. Okay. Secondly, who said that the metabolic syndrome is actually, we are looking at triglycerides as for one component of cholesterol. It's a bad cholesterol. It's involved fasting, triglycerides, and glucose. Raise your hand. Okay. Who said that metabolic syndrome is actually looking at blood pressure and HDL cholesterol. HDL cholesterol is actually is a good cholesterol in the cholesterol component. Raise your hand. I can see that the women is on this table they raise their head. Of all the criteria, the answer is A, B, and C. So we talked about the syndrome is actually we are looking at the waist circumference. If you check your blood, the passing glucose, plastic uh, triglyceride and HDL cholesterol as well as the blood pressure. Again, another easy slide. But I just would like to highlight this. If your waist is actually 36 inch for men and woman 32 inch for women, you actually have only one criteria for metabolism. Now I like you to send to me now for ladies who has waistline more than 32? Raise your hand. <laughs> Good. Right. Mine exactly at 32. And men who have waistline more than 36 inch, raise your hand. 
Okay, and it's going to be red. So we know that in metabolic syndrome, they actually have five criteria. If you have three out of these, we only classify as metabolic syndrome. Okay, if you actually check your blood, you don't have other parameters, that means you have one criteria. You actually doesn't have metabolic syndrome, but if you don't control yourself, you might be at risk to develop it in the middle. So let's look again at the full data. We found that among the schizophrenic patients, in the full data, the prevalence of metabolic syndrome is actually higher than general population. Again, because of treatment. And we actually when we compare those who have metabolic syndrome, if we actually start the patient with aeroproposal and placebo, aeroproposal is one of the name of clinical psychiatry, patients who actually do not develop metabolic syndrome after the institution. But those who actually went to at least one arm with aeroproposal, the other one will be polycythemic. We are not seeing that the, the one with polycythemic is actually at a higher rate to have metabolic syndrome. Again, in my metabolic syndrome, we must at least have three criteria out of five. How about diabetes? Metabolic syndrome is with the criteria, but diabetes is actually is going to develop the condition. So, which statement is true? Time to diabetes onset is the first among antipsychotic, which is true and C. Antipsychotic in this way again can be reversed by switching. I'll show you which one is the drug If you look at time, this is at one year, 12 months. Initially, when you actually start any patient, somehow, with which medication which is listed here, the incidence of diabetes is more or less the same. But after one year, you can see that the the rate essentially will come up much, much higher than the other drugs. So, Tocopin is the one that I actually know for seeing uh, what type of high incidence of diabetes in the And when you actually look at the new onset of diabetes among the, the, the medication, again, you see that Tocopin has actually about 1.5 times higher risk to develop diabetes in the among the psychotherapy. But remember that study for the thing is actually you can see the incident one year, but in Belgium they did the study after three months. So this population session is naive, which means that the is actually a new diagnosis, new case for schizophrenia. So they start patients on all the medication and after three months you will be noticing that Prozepine is one I don't need to wait for one year but three months it will be changed So, and the this is the naive treatment patient meaning that new diagnosis with Prozepine start to have the medication and start to have the medication So now I go for switch study So, at this moment there are actually are three drugs found to have a uh, neutral interval of weight gain and also neutral interval of uh, uh, lipid and glucose for part for specific function. Aeroproposal, Zipranzidone, and Enzoplite. But unfortunately for my slide, I only have drugs that have two drugs, uh, Aeroproposal and Zipranzidone. So here, if you look at if patient previously on Ponzantin, this is Risperidone and on Haloperidol. If you switch them from Ponzantin to Aeroproposal, the weight reduction is, all, is about 2 kg within 6 weeks, in one, one and a half months. So this is the changes that you can see in terms of the weight reduction in treatment. And if you look at this, for other parameter, if that the patient on onesophy, if you change to aeroproposal, the weight gain reduction is 
very, very simple. Compared to the others, quite a few is very good. So this is what you can see. If patient previously on quite a few, if you actually put on every profile dog, if quite a few, if you put on all of the feet, you can see a big pain. If patient previously on every or uh, almost a pain, if you change to Zipracinum, so you can see the blade reduction is actually reduced rated in the other medication. That is a way. How about is it profile? If a patient previously on olanzapine, olanzapine, if you change the error protocol, the lipid abnormalities also will be reduced. Sometimes it can be back to normal. So without at any uh, anti lipid medication with the same antipsychotic medication, you can reverse that technology. Meaning that one medicine switches it, another medicine is good enough to reverse that technology. You don't need to add anti hypothetic, you don't need to add anti lipid, anti glucose, and so on. At this moment, that's what we have in the literature. But sometimes in this will actually. But again, as I say, there's no magic drugs. Some patient works, some patient does not work. So for those of patients who does not work, they might need additional medication for that. In the actual practice, what you should do? You should get a proper history. Sometimes it's very difficult to get history. So you have to get these one, especially whether you have the smoking sleep. That's why it's very, very important when you come for visit, sometimes you request, please bring your family to the lock on that. Because why? This is what you want to capture. You want to capture this personal and family sleep. You want to actually assess the risk that patient is having. The next one, once you measure this, Okay, from the history, you measure very objectively your weight, your height, your waist conference, and also fasting and glucose uh, I think in UMMC, you must actually know that not everything is free. When you do screening, patients need to pay for the blood investigation. You must bear in mind that you know this is you must explain to patients this is so you will have benefits to them. You can say, okay, I might screen you every six months if it's normal. But if it's, if it's not normal, I might need to monitor after switching to another drug more frequently than two months. So the family know that why the blood investigation is taken. They know that, you know what? Because this is when you actually incur additional cost to them, then you might not come back for that disease. They don't understand why that we need to monitor the blood. Uh, but I think in Parkland, uh, I'm not mistaken, in other ministries, people, the best investigation is actually free. And after you have all of these parameters, this is actually not really applied to doctors, to the family members as well. You must actually check does my brother who has schizophrenia? Need this or not? The annual treatments, besides the medication that's coming now, do they need to be referred to dietitian? Do they need to actually go for exercise uh, consultation or whatever? Uh, do they actually want to get help for smoking cessation? Does the doctor actually have done enough in terms of referring my brother to other doctors for other problems? Okay. So as a family member, if you understand this as a whole, you know that what can be done for your family members. And for doctors as well, I think it's actually our job to do to actually go to have a very holistic management for this of medication in terms of switching medication. So in summary, actually, if a um, patient is very stable, uh, we actually do consider to actually switch to other mutual antipsychotics in view of the metabolic syndrome problems. Okay? And bear in mind that actually the benefit is not magic drugs. 
say it's not that by one week, two weeks, you can actually observe the changes. The weight loss must actually be one that you see more than one year. And the lipid benefits is the ones that actually, is the ones that quite rapidly um, you can see the changes. In terms of the weight uh, reduction, if you notice that the weight gain is actually more than 5%, uh, if the BMI is actually increased by one unit, so from now on, the nurses or the ones who are actually taking parameters is not only taking the weight of time, you should do a strong work, you should calculate the BMI itself. That will increase you in one thing that you have to have as well. To actually not only do the weight high, but also the BMI. And also, to get look at the waist. So, Sometimes you notice that uh, when you are trying to see the waist is 38 meters, you should put in bracket last visit 36 inch. So you know that patient in three months have actually increased two inch of the waist. You should actually do additional work. Okay? Which is actually very meaningful to the patient. Meaning that you, you alert that at your level, patient actually has actually towards the other children and at the same time you are actually helping the psychiatrist to make the decision for the decision. So with that, thank you very much. Any questions?